Well, greetings, saints. Welcome to Chaplain Peter One on YouTube. You can also find me on Brighteon.com under Heavenly Glory. And my website is EternalValuesMinistries.com. I post on Facebook and also on uh, LinkedIn and Twitter, which these days is called X. All right, I'm going to continue in Romans chapter 3. And the last video I made, because I want to go through this all book, the whole book of Romans here, hopefully. And we saw that when the Apostle Paul gives this indictment against the human race, you can read it from 310 on. There's none righteous. There's none that seeks after God. They don't understand. They're unprofitable. Nobody does good. No, not one. On and on he goes. Destruction and misery are in their ways. The way of peace is not known. There's no fear of God before their eyes. Now, then we focused on 319. Now we know that what things soever the law say it, it say it to them that are under the law. So, when Paul said all those things, he wasn't saying that you cannot repent, you cannot respond to the gospel. You've got to look at the previous video to get the whole thing here. I'm just going to touch on it before I continue. And what are you saying? You're under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world become guilty before God. Amen? Then in, then in our... Romans 3.20, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. If you remember Romans chapter 7, Paul said, I had not known sin except the law says thou shalt not covet. Amen. The law was temporary and given to us as a school teacher to bring us to Christ. Now we continue here in Romans 3.21, justification by faith. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. If you're born again, you know that your justification you being declared righteous by God has to come without the law. It has to be. Because the law condemns you and me because we have broken the law. Most of the world thinks that they're pretty good. But when you examine what they believe to be pretty good, you'll find out all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all sin by action, in thought, in deeds, everything. Amen? So it's got to be without the law. It's got to be by grace through faith. It's got to be by the mercy of God. So this is now manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Now, the Apostle Paul says the gospel he preached, this mystery, which was kept hid hidden, um, since the uh, foundation of the world, but now is made manifest, how was it witnessed by the law and the prophets? Well, the law showed you you couldn't do it by the law. And the prophets spoke about many of these things, as, as the writings in the law did also. For instance, um, Abraham believed God it was counted to him for righteousness. Why does Paul bring that up in Romans 4? Because he wants us to understand he's not making up some new thing that you just believe and get saved. That Abraham just believed. He had faith. And God counted to him for righteousness. David, under the law, he uh, should have been stoned to death for his um, murder of Uriah, Bashida's husband, and his adultery with her. But he wasn't. And you can read in his writings in, um, in Psalms where he goes on to say that um, 
Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. He will not impute iniquity. David knew the forgiveness of God while he was still under the law. And, and so did many. And so being witnessed by the law and the prophets. This is um, the gospel we preach today. Let me read to you in, um, in Romans chapter uh, 16, verses 25, right at the end of the chapter, and 26. He says, Now to him that is a power to establish uh, you according to my gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. So this is what establishes us today. Paul calls it my gospel. Uh, it is the gospel that the Lord Jesus gave to him. He didn't give it to Peter. He didn't give it to uh, Barnabas. He didn't give it to uh, nobody except Paul. Galatians 1.11, But I certify unto you, brethren, the gospel I preached is not after man. Amen. He calls it the unsearchable, the untraceable riches of Christ. Yet, you can find it. Not spelled out, but you can see that it was, it was talking about this, and Paul just makes it clear to what is going on in this final revelation. Because this gospel of grace this is the final revelation of how we all got saved. Amen? Now, so the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. So this righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus, Jesus was faithful, he paid the price, he's the one who never sinned, he was God in the flesh, and us believing that he did this for us, God counts you righteous. He imputes the righteousness of Jesus to you. Unto all and upon all that believe, for there is no difference. Why is there no difference? Verse 23. For all have sinned, and the all means all. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Being justified, justified uh, freely, declared righteous, justified freely, undeservedly, freely, by his grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. There is nobody who has a gospel, a way of salvation, that even comes close to this. The beauty of the uh, gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't have to look at um, reincarnation or or some, um, some pharisaical laws, or anything like that. We just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. It's so simple. And when the scripture says, repent and believe, it means just what it says. The word repentance means a change of mind. And if you really have a change of mind and you really believed, your life will be changed also. So if you if you um, sometime trusted Jesus as Lord and Savior and your life has not changed and you don't know if you died right now, you're going to heaven. You don't know that you have the righteousness of Christ or that the Holy Spirit lives in you. You are not saved. You are not born again. And you can call on God and he will save you. So it's a free gift, salvation. Verse 25. 
whom God has set forth to be a propitiation. Uh, I like to think of this word as uh, basically uh, a completely uh, satisfying sacrifice. In other words, legally, Jesus uh, took our our sin and gives to us his righteousness. It's a satisfaction. Jesus is the only one who could have satisfied the law of God, Moses' law. So, whom God has set forth, the word pre, uh, propitiation is also used as mercy seat. He's the mercy seat when the uh, high, when the priest would sacrifice that animal for the sins of uh, Israel on the Day of Atonement and sprinkle it on the mercy seat for the forgiveness of Israel's sins for that one year. Their sins would be forgiven for that one year. But then every year they had it repeated over and over. And since the temple's been destroyed in 70 AD, they have no sacrifice. There is nothing. There's only Jesus. Only the Lord Jesus, the Messiah, Israel's Messiah. So he satisfies, legally satisfies the justice of God through his righteous holy life as a man, being 100% a man, a human, and yet 100% God. He set forth to be a propitiation through faith, through faith, you trusting, you believing what the word of God says that he did for you in his blood, the shedding of his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission, that's the forgiveness of sins that are past. I want to look up this word past because a lot of people take it as if this is talking about your own personal past life, that he only died for your sins in the past. But as you read onward here, you can, you can see that um, the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance, in other words, God putting up with you and God tolerating uh, mankind throughout history, putting up with them, forbearance. And then he says, to declare, I say at this time, not your personal lifetime, but in history time, to declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believe it in Jesus. So let me see in the Greek if that um, has another connotation here, because sometimes they do. Let's see what we got here. It's used once to mean past. To arise or come before, happen before of sins committed previously. Okay, so you have to understand it in the context in which it is. Amen? It happens that way with a lot of words. You got to look at the context. And if you look at it, he says here, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. He's talking about before the cross. The blood of Jesus, uh, the sins of Jesus, covers them in the past. Let me, um, you know, why don't I type this in so we can have a good look at this. Hebrews chapter 9. Because this you have to understand so you can live right before the Lord. Hebrews chapter 9. It's about verse 14, I believe. Let's see here. Okay, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? We serve God in the spirit, not, not under the law. We're free. Now, verse 15, and for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. 
that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, the Old Testament, they which are called under the Old Testament might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Amen? Do you see that? He's not talking about your personal past. He's talking about them before the cross. This is important to understand. Because some people think uh, he's talking about your sins are only paid up to the time you trusted Christ. And now um, you're on your own or something. As if, uh, as if the Lord doesn't keep you. The Lord doesn't, uh, that he didn't forgive all your sins. This is not right. Because uh, God sent his son who was sinless. And if you think that he only paid for your sins up to the time for which you, uh, from where you got saved and your future sins are not covered and you got to constantly repent, you better not miss one sinful thought, one sinful action or deed because you'll end up in hell. That's how serious this is. So, let's read verse uh, 16. It goes on to explain it more. For where a testament is, there also of necessity must be the death of a testator. So, this is the last will of the Lord Jesus Christ, the covenant of him shedding his blood for us, the testament. The last will and testament you hear often, right? For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is of no strength at all while the testator live it. Whereupon neither, one, neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. And it, and it continues on. But I, I want you to understand that... Um, this is the last will and testament of the Lord Jesus Christ, and your name is written in it, and you inherit all things with Christ. Hallelujah. That is good news. That is the gospel. Praise his holy name. Now, so, we understand now that our past, historically past, on the other side of the cross in the First Testament, the Old Testament, through the forbearance, the forbearance. Acts 17 says that God winked at their in, at their ignorance in the past, but now has commanded all men everywhere to repent because he's made a day where he's going to judge every one of us by that man whom he raised from the dead, the Lord Jesus Christ. So God has a lot of patience and long suffering for people throughout history, and may I say also for you today in your own personal lives. So he goes on to say, since that was before the cross, he goes on to say now in verse 26, to declare, I say, at this time, today, this present time, Paul's time where he revealed the grace of God, which we're still under, this time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Okay, Paul then goes on to say in Romans 3.27, where is boasting then? Where is, are you going to brag about this, how good you are? It is excluded. By what law of works? No, nay, but by the law of faith. The law of faith is not the, the law of Moses. The law of faith is, um, let's go take a look at it. In Romans chapter 8. Romans 8. Okay, let's read on from verse 1. There is, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, <clears throat> excuse me, but after 
the spirit. Okay, the flesh is to the law what the spirit is to freedom. We are free. We are at liberty. Only don't use your liberty as a cloak to do malicious, evil things. The, uh, the Spirit says, the Holy Spirit tells us, Paul writes. So he says, there is no condemnation, no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. What is this um, intimidating here? It's saying that if you walk after the flesh, there will be condemnation. You've got to be careful. You've got now something to do. You've got a job to do now that you're saved. Amen? You've got to crucify the old man, the flesh. You've got to put on the new man. You've got to yield yourself to God. You've got to fight the good fight of faith. You have to run the race. Amen? God is for us. But there's some things that he wants us to do after you're saved now. Romans 8, 2. Now here it is. For the law of the spirit of life. We saw the law of faith, right? Well, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. Only a man with a born-again mind, the mind of Christ, could understand this. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. He didn't condemn you. He condemned sin in the flesh. And that was put on Christ's flesh. He bore it. He bore our sicknesses, our diseases. He bore our griefs and our sorrows. When thou shalt make his, his soul an offering for sin. Hallelujah. The righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh. Again, he says it. Don't walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. Carnal Christians, listen, look warm Christians. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity, it's an enemy against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Amen? Let's go back to Romans 3. So, where is boasting then? Verse 27. It's excluded. By what law? Of works, no, but by the law of faith. Now, Paul is going to come to a conclusion here. As you read the first three chapters of Romans, they're not under the law, but the wages of sin was still death. Under the law, the wages of sin was still death. Okay, so we, we conclude that all have sinned and come short of glory of God. And now he concludes here again. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. A man is justified by faith without the deeds, the works of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. We'll see as we get into the next chapter, Romans 4, um, Abraham had the faith before he was circumcised. And he believed God and, was, and declared he was counted righteous so that he might be the father of them that are not circumcised and also of them that are circumcised under the law. Yes, the Gentiles also. Romans 3.20 
seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and the uncircumcision through faith. Now, I used to wonder, how does this work? What does he mean here? But here's what I think he is saying. Okay, there's one God, there's one mediator, which shall justify the circumcision, those that were under, under the law of Israel, by faith. Before the law and under the law, you, you had faith in what God said. Noah was told to build an ark. Abraham went to sacrifice his son. Amen. Left his parents and went out on his own there, following the instructions of God, and he believed God. And so this was done by faith. And the uncircumcision that you and me today will have the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ through faith, through the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I think it means. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. That's in the Greek a very strong no. Yea, we establish the law. Now, let me, let me explain this to you so you get this. Do we then make void of no value? Do we make void the law, the Ten Commandments, for instance, through faith? No, of course not. But we establish the law. Well, wait a second. If we're not under the law, how are we establishing the law? If you walk in the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. All the law can do you is the law can do is stir up the sinful passions and lusts in us. It was given for a temporary period of time to to show us that you can't get saved by us by the law to lead us to salvation by grace through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So once we're saved, yeah, we don't we don't go around murdering people. We don't go around stealing no more, or lying, perjuring ourselves. Amen? We love the Lord. We're not idolaters. We're not bowing down to statues or to other things as if they were God. Amen? So in that sense, we establish the law. The law is holy. The law is good. But I am weak through the flesh. Romans 7. If righteousness should have, should have come, it, 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 it'd be great for it to come through the law. No problem. The problem's in me. I'm the weak one. I'm the sinner of the fallen uh, Adamic race. Amen? All of us are. And so, now that you've been set free to live for the Lord, you establish the law. The law. You don't walk contrary to it, that's for sure. We, By living right in the Spirit, serving God, we establish the law. Okay, praise the Lord. Any comments, any questions, be kind. And um, you can uh, leave them for me and we can discuss things. I love you, saints. And we'll get into Romans chapter 4 in a little while. Okay, God bless you.